In this video, I'm going to show you how to tear down a Panasonic Lumix ZS19. Now it will be the same procedure for a ZS20 and also a TZ27 and TZ30. There aren't a lot of screws involved in the process, but I went ahead and made a diagram that will help you keep track of where the screws go. I'll put a link to this diagram that's on my website in the description for this video. To use this diagram, take a piece of double-sided tape and put it over the top of every yellow screw that's on the diagram. Then when you remove a screw from the camera, just put it directly on the spot where it goes. The tape will keep it in place. You'll need a 4 aught Phillips head screwdriver. If you haven't done it already, make sure that the battery is removed and the SD card. We'll start by removing the two screws on the bottom of the camera. Next, take the two screws out of each of the end pieces. Now we'll remove the front cover. You may need to use a small screwdriver to help separate the cover from the body. Just get it high enough until you can get it to where you can get your fingers down underneath that cover. And now remove the back cover. Just lift up right here by where the tripod mount is. Then you can pull it off. With both covers off, you can remove the mount for the tripod. Just lift it right out of there. Now we'll go ahead and remove this end. To remove it, you'll have to put a small screwdriver in here and lift up on this plastic tab right here. Now with that clip released, you should be able to just pick it up and take it off. Now there's another clip right here that's holding it, but if you tip up the back side, when you pick it up, it'll help release it. You don't have to put a screwdriver in there. Now we'll do the other end. This one also has a clip right here holding it in place. But I found that if you just grab the end of this piece with two fingers, and as you pick it up, slightly move it in that direction, that that clip will release on its own. The next part that we'll remove is this circuit board. We'll have to release these flat ribbon cables first. Just put a small screwdriver underneath this black tab right here and lift up. Just put a small screwdriver underneath and just gently pull back. With the flat ribbon cables released, we can just lift that board right off of there. The only thing that's holding it on is this electrical connector right here. This is a socket. Well, this board is plugged into it. So all you need to do is lift it up and it'll come right off. Now we can remove the LCD screen. To remove it, all we have to do is lift up on this little metal tab down here on this end. 
That's the only thing really locking it in place. Lift up on that so that the end comes up. With that up, you should be able to slide it that direction. There's two tabs that slide into a groove, one on each side. And that's all that holds it in. So just grab it and pull it out. Now we'll take this metal shield off. There's three screws that hold it in place. One here, here, and here. With the three screws out, all we need to do is to release this little catch right here. This plastic piece has a little notch that goes inside this shield. All we have to do is put a screwdriver in there, push the plastic back and lift the shield up at the same time. Then you ought to be able to just pull the whole shield off. Next we'll remove this plastic piece right here. It's got a couple of uh, parts that poke through the circuit board. One here and one here. We just need to lift up on those and then it comes off. Now we'll disconnect these two flat ribbon cables that come off the lens unit. The first thing that we need to do is just peel this plastic back, this adhesive, Then lift the black tab. Then you can pull that right out. With the flat ribbon cables disconnected, we can just lift that lens unit right out of there now. So if that's what you're going to be doing is just replacing this lens unit, that's as far as you have to go. Now we can remove the main board. The main board has the SD card slot on the back side, the audio visual connections, and the main processors for the camera. We'll need to take this screw out first. Now we can just lift this board right off of here. Just keep in mind though that it's actually plugged into a socket that's connected to this top piece and it's right about here. So when you pick it up, pick it up fairly straight if you can. Now we can go ahead and remove the top piece. There's four clips that are holding that in place. One right here, here, one here, and one there. Start with this one, put a small screwdriver behind it, separate it and lift it up, then this one, then kind of hold it in place with your finger when you're doing these two on the other side so that it doesn't pop back down. It should just lift right off of there now. The last board that's in here now is for the flash and it has what's called a flash capacitor on it. Now this capacitor can hold a high charge even with the camera off and the battery removed. It can actually hold up to hundreds of volts. So you want to be careful. These two posts right there are the end of the capacitor. You want to make sure you don't touch that at all. In fact, the best thing to do is to discharge it. I'll go ahead and hook a meter up to it just so we can see what the actual charge is on it right now.
There we can see that it's got just under 30 volts on it. That's not too bad, but it's still enough. So we'll go ahead and discharge this. The way that I discharge these capacitors is to take an LED and put a 10,000 ohm resistor in series with it. On this one, I soldered it to the anode of the LED. So then all I have to do is touch these two leads to the posts of the capacitor and leave it on there as long as the LED is lit up. Once the LED goes dim, the capacitor is discharged. So we'll just touch the leads on that capacitor. Now if we touch it on there and the LED doesn't come on, just switch it around so that the leads are uh, reversed and try it again. Okay, it didn't come on right there, so let's turn it around. Just leave it on there until the LED is dim. The capacitor should be discharged now. Now the reason that you want to use an LED to discharge it is that will discharge the capacitor slowly. The last thing you ever want to do is short those posts out because you could actually damage the capacitor. To remove this board, we're going to have to release three clips. There's one here, one right here, and one here. We'll need to push those clips over as we're lifting up on the circuit board. To start with, lift up on this metal clip right here. This clip is actually connected to the circuit board. So if you lift up on it and then put your thumb on here to hold it in place, then you can push on this clip and that board should pop up when you push that in. Then do this one. And finally, if it didn't already release, you could push that one back. Then that board should come right out. And that was the last part. So now, I'll show you how to put it back together. We'll start with the board for the flash. Just line the capacitor up with this hole here and put that in. Make sure that this clip gets lined up. And double check to make sure these little plastic keepers are in place. If not, you might need to push it out just a little bit. Now we'll put the top piece back on. On this you want to make sure that this end that has the metal tab with a little bump lines up and goes inside this little groove here and you want to make sure that this the very tip goes inside that hole there. And with that lined up you can should be able to push the rest of it in place. Just double check and make sure these little clips did go over the little bumps on there. Next will be the main board. Now you just want to make sure that this electrical connector on here lines up with the socket. Once it's lined up, just push it on. You can hear it snap into place and then put the screw in. Next will be the lens unit. It literally just drops in place. Once it's in you can line up these flat ribbon cables
make sure they're pushed as far as possible that direction and when they are push the tab over and then lay this black adhesive tape back down over the top Now we'll put this piece of plastic back in. I just want to make sure that the three posts on here, one here, here, and there, all line up with the three holes on, on the board. There's one there, one right there, and one there. So just make sure those are lined up before you push it down. It should sit right down flush when everything's in place. Next we'll put the shield back on. Just want to make sure that the ends here go inside these grooves where they're supposed to. This one actually goes behind that metal clip. Then the rest of it should just fall pretty much right in place once it's lined up. Just push it and it'll clip and you'll hear this one that we had released earlier, you'll hear that snap into place. And now we'll put the three screws back in. Next we'll do the LCD display you just want to make sure that these little metal tabs that are on the sides here, that those line up with this little groove right here. There's one on each side. Line those up first and then push it back and once it's back all the way then you can snap this side down. Now we can put this circuit board back on. We just want to make sure and put it underneath this flat ribbon cable right here and on top of the large one. And then the circuit board itself has two bumps on the end. Those will line up with a couple of notches inside that metal shield. So put it underneath the small one, slide it across and make sure the end of the circuit board goes in. Then kind of line it up. You can feel it when it falls into place with that socket down here. Once it's over the socket, just push it down. Okay, now we'll want to hook the flat ribbon cable back up. Just line the cable up with the socket. Make sure that the black tab is straight up. If it's not, the cable's not going to go in as far as it should. So make sure that tab is up and then push the cable in as far as it'll go. And then push the tab back down. Then do it with a smaller one also. This one's a little more difficult. You kind of have to hold it down with your thumb and then take the screwdriver and pull the end over the edge of the socket. Same thing here. Make sure that tab is up. And when it is, you can just push that in as far as it'll go. And then push the tab back down. Next go ahead and put the end pieces on. You can see on one side one end of the piece is curved. That goes along the bottom. Just lay it over the top and it should just snap down into place when you push it. 
and do the other side. Now we'll put the tripod mount back in. Just make sure that this part right here lines up with this piece of shield right here. Just lay it in over the top and once it's in place just push it backwards. Once you put the front and back cover on it'll hold it in place. We'll put the front cover on now. Just make sure that these posts that are on the end of the cover line up with the grooves that go underneath the end pieces. And once it's lined up, it should snap right into place. And do the same thing with the back piece. Now we'll put the screws in the end. And finally we'll put the uh, last two screws in the bottom. And that's it. We've completely disassembled and reassembled this camera.